Well, hello. Carl and I would like to welcome you to our continuing conversation on contentment. You know, so far we've talked about how you can't find contentment within yourself. And I think it's also important to point out that if you're, if you are seeking contentment through yourself, meaning you're trying to achieve your own contentment on your own, you, you got to really be careful because that becomes a tyranny all of its own. If you decide you're going to keep up with the Joneses in your neighborhood, you're going to find out quickly that the Joneses always buy one more thing and it's going to be bright and shiny brighter and shinier than anything you've got. So you're going to have to replace yours to keep up with them. And pretty soon you find yourself on a treadmill that goes nowhere good. And that's true in every way, not just keeping up with the Joneses, but if you're always trying to be content because you did things right and well, and you're pleased with yourself, you're going to find out sooner or later that you're not as good as you think you are and you're going to fail and then you're going to be miserable. So contentment through our own efforts just doesn't work. You know, I, I remember some years ago, my oldest son was about to get married. And uh, <clears throat> Scott is the consummate baseball fan. Everything he has says Cubs on it somewhere. He got that from his dad. Scott will never be caught dead in a White Sox ball cap like I will. I cheer for both. He thinks I'm a reprobate because I do that, but he also understands I kind of grew up on that side of town. But anyway, that's not the point. The point is that, that uh, he was about to get married to a wonderful young lady. I'm so proud of her, um, an amazing daughter-in-law, Amanda. But he called me up one day and he said, Hey, Dad, let's do one more father-son trip before I get married. There's no way I can pass up that opportunity. Time with any one of my kids is the best time in life to me. And so I said, what do you got in mind? And Scott said, well, this is the last year for baseball in old Yankee Stadium. They're building a new one and it opens next year. What do you say we go catch a ball game? I thought that was a great idea. So I told him, let me work on that. And I <clears throat> made some phone calls and I bought a couple tickets and I um, got some airplane tickets as well and rented a car, got a couple hotel rooms because we, we flew out one morning from Chicago very early in the morning and we had a rule. The rule was we each take one backpack and that's it. Gonna be gone, I think it was two days and three nights or three days and four nights, I don't know, but one backpack. So you only got the clothes you can jam into it. We both had laptops into it. Uh, in them, and uh, and we, we took off out of Chicago and landed in Baltimore and uh, checked into our hotel, caught some public transportation, drove down or, or rode down to the ballpark Camden Yards next to Wrigley Field, my favorite ballpark in the world, I think. Just incredible atmosphere. I loved it. And we watched uh, an Orioles game that evening, had a great time, and uh, went back to the hotel, spent the night, got in our car and drove north into New York, uh, checked into our hotel, got rid of the rental, and um, started just taking some public transportation. We were actually staying right across the Hudson from downtown, or uh, well, from lower Manhattan. And so we take, took a water ferry across the, the water into lower Manhattan, and we hiked and hiked and hiked. And Part of that time, most of that time, maybe all of that time was with our backpacks. And I remember that first evening we hiked for hours and hours. Neither of us had ever been to Manhattan before. We didn't know where we were going. We were just, we knew north from south, big buildings from small buildings. So we, we just went everywhere. We, we did lower Manhattan, we did Midtown, we did all of it and all the neighborhoods in between on foot. Um, during that entire two-day event there in New York, we took one subway ride. The rest of it was was on our feet. And I remember how heavy that backpack got. I remember lugging that thing around, especially the last day after the Yankees game. We, we were on a water ferry, and we took it back to our hotel. And... Um, and then we went back over to Manhattan and hiked around again. And those things just got so 
heavy. And they were just backpacks. I mean, how much can you get into a backpack? What could it have possibly weighed? I don't have any real idea. I just know that it got really old really fast. And when the time came to put that down, I was really, really glad to be able to do so. That memory always takes me to a scripture in Matthew, in the 11th chapter, starting with verse 28, where Jesus is talking about carrying around heavy weights and how those heavy weights make you miserable. They make you anything but content. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I'm humble and gentle at heart and you'll find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear and the burden I give you is light. So here's the truth. Let me give you the, let me give you the nugget of truth and then we'll talk about it for a minute. The nugget of truth is this. The only way you will ever be content in this world is to lay down your own burdens at the cross of Christ Give your burdens and your fears and your worries and your anxieties to him to sign them over to him and say, now you own them. Jesus, you own them. I relinquish my worries and fears and anxieties to you. So if any of them comes true, that's on you. And you'll have to get me through it. Because I really believe you're God and I believe it enough that I'm going to actually take action not just mental action, but I'm going to now live in obedient action, doing what you tell me to do. And that first thing is to come to you because I am weary and I carry heavy burdens and I need rest. Translated, God, I'm worn out. I'm worn out. I need your rest, your contentment, because I can't earn my own. I've tried. And Jesus says, if we'll sign over our weights and our burdens, that we can come to him, he'll give us rest. He will what? Well, he'll take his yoke. It's easy to bear, and he'll put it on us. The burden he'll give us is like the yoke, you know, nothing personal, Carl, but talking about oxen, you put a yoke on oxen, two oxen, and it's that wooden thing between them you hook them up to, and they pull together to plow the field or pull the buggy or whatever it is those oxen are doing. And Jesus is saying, if you'll come to me, I'll put my yoke on you. One side of the yoke is Jesus. The other side of the yoke is you. He'll pull with you. He'll take your burden and he'll give you his burden in place of it. And what does he say about his burden? He says, well, it's light. It, I'll, I'll give you rest for your souls. My, my burden is easy and light. The only way to find contentment, the only way to get through COVID-19 or any other part of life without raging anxiety is by giving your your burdens to Christ by going to the cross and saying, because you're, you've died for me up there, I give you my sin and my burdens and my fears and my anxieties down here. I give them to you. You worry about them. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that I do a good job at my place of employment. But if I lose my job, that's on you. I'm going to do my best, but it's on you. I'm going to do my best to stay well. I'm going to socially distance. I'm going to do everything that I should do, everything I'm told to do. I'm going to be smart, but if I get it, it's on you. Because I'm coming to you, Jesus. I am weary. I am worn out from carrying these heavy burdens, and you promised me rest. You told me that you would yoke up with me if I would let you do that. And you are gentle and humble. And if I, if, I, if I yoke up to you, I will find rest for my soul. Because your yoke is easy. And your burden is light. That, that's contentment. 
That's the definition of contentment. Teaming up with Jesus. Yoking yourself to him. There it is. There's the answer to how to come out from under the fear and the anxiety. Now, let me just, let me just say this. Sometimes those things come because of chemical imbalance. That is true. That is absolutely true. It is also true of depression. Sometimes it is legitimately because of chemical imbalance and you need to see a doctor and you need to have him treat you. And sometimes it requires taking medication. And let me tell you, I have done that. There is no weakness there. Life is hard and we have to carry a lot. And sometimes your chemistry can't do it and you need help. But beyond that, you need the help of Jesus. He'll team up with you and he'll get you through this. Do you get it? You can't find contentment on your own that lasts. At best, you'll find contemporary contentment. It will go away and the, the raging tyranny of anxiety and fear and stress will come roaring back in worse than ever before. But when you team up with Christ and you give him your worries and fears and you take upon yourself the yoke of Christ, my commitment now is to walk with you and do what you tell me to do. Suddenly you find out that he walks with you. He pulls with you. He's the strength. He's the strength. And his contentment comes. I hope you'll try that. I really do. It makes all the difference in the world. You just might find out when you do it that he has a different plan for your life altogether. And if you follow it, I promise it'll be a better plan. I promise he always has the best way in mind for you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this scripture. It means so much that you're willing to, to, to walk next to me, to yoke up with me, to work with me on the fears and the anxieties, to take off me the stress and the pain and the fear and to replace it with your presence which breathes peace into my life. Father, give my friends wisdom. Help them to know if they need to see a doctor, but help them not to hesitate today to yoke up to Jesus. They don't need a prescription for that. They've already got it. And it's found in the book of Matthew. Thanks for that, Father. You're forever good to us, and I'm grateful. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, that trip with my son turned out to be one of the best trips that I ever took in my life. I have incredible memories of that. Took another trip with my other son when he got married. We went skiing in the Rockies. I'll tell you about that one someday. But for now, um, team up with Jesus. Yoke up with him. See the difference he'll make. You have a great day. See you tomorrow.